Murat, I'd like to hear from you now. In particular, uh, you've seen things now from both sides. You've been on the industry side. You're now on the academic side. So you're seeing uh, how the, the field is evolving, maybe potentially, hopefully, evolving away from just demanding the classic full factorial design for everything to something potentially more sample efficient. I'd like to know what your thoughts are on this transition as you've seen it in industry, as you're seeing it now in academics, and what, what really needs to be done to help push uh, people who are doing design more in this uh, sample efficient direction. Right. <clears throat> yeah, it's a very good point. And I think uh, one of the key factors here is the cultural shift, uh, which was also mentioned in one of the talks. So we, we, we already brought up these engineering statistics approaches like Six Sigma, that people get trained and uh, they learn it uh, during their engineering training. So they're familiar and more comfortable doing this. And when we bring this uh, new machine learning or data-driven approaches, there is often a resistance because they see it as a black box and they didn't see successful case studies which are relevant to their work. And uh, I think there, there is a lot of hesitation and resistance uh, from the people who, who can actually take advantage. And uh, yeah, speeding up the calculations, machine learning models, tuning machine learning models is great. But uh, when I came across these Bayesian optimization approaches and SIGOPT in particular, we felt that the best payoff would be in experimental work or in the planned trials, because each observation is really expensive compared to either physics-based simulation, even if, it, if it's time consuming, or tuning a machine learning mm -hmm. training run. So we felt there we could see a lot of uh, payoff in reducing the number of observations when we run our optimization campaigns.